Did you know that Jake Gyllenhaal almost replaced Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man in Spider-Man 2? And there was supposed to be a love triangle between Peter Parker, Mary Jane, and Doc Ock? Spider-Man 2 turns 20 years old today, which is my favorite movie of all time. So with that, let's talk about some fun facts that I bet you did not know. Starting off with the original script where Doc Ock was supposed to be around the same age as Peter Parker and Mary Jane, that would have saw Peter Parker having some serious competition for Mary Jane's love. Challenger's reference? But not only that, in this version of the script, it would have been revealed that Doc Ock created the spider that bit Peter Parker. And Doc Ock's main motivation for going after Spider-Man is to replace his spine with Spider-Man's spine because it's a stronger spine. <laughs> Thank God they asked that. This is one that I feel like most people know, but Jake Gyllenhaal almost replaced Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man in this movie. While filming Seabiscuit, Tobey Maguire had some back injuries that caused him to almost miss the production timeline for Spider-Man 2, which we also get some funny meta jokes in the movie itself where he says, my back, which also gets called back to in No Way Home. I love that touch. But according to the writers, this was already in the script before the injury. I think somebody lied. But Jake Gyllenhaal and Tobey Maguire would go on to play brothers in the movie Brothers. And Jake would also return to the Spider-Man franchise playing Mysterio in Spider-Man Far From Home. It all comes full circle. This shot of Peter Parker leaving his costume in the trash is a direct call back to this panel from the Spider-Man No More storyline. And they even got more on the nose with it with his Daily Beetle article title. That alleyway is also the same one from the iconic Upside Down Kiss from the first movie. So I guess when Pete's looking for a pump and dump, that's where he goes to. There were many actors considered for the role of Doc Ock, like Robert De Niro, Christopher Walken, Ed Harris. But ultimately, after watching the film Frida, Sam Raimi was convinced that Alfred Molina was his guy. Alfred Molina slimmed down for the role and delivered one of the best sympathetic villains ever put to screen. His tentacles were brought to life via a mixture of practical effects and CGI. Most of the time when he's carrying the tentacles, they're practical. But when the tentacles carry him, they're CGI. And Alfred Molina actually named every single tentacle, Harry, Larry, Flo, and Moe. And also, whenever the lights and the tentacles themselves are white, that means Otto's in control. Whenever they turn red, that means the tentacles are in control. And in the MCU, they're entirely CGI. <laughs> Still so surreal, we got him back. Alfred Molina also refused to do his own stunt, so much so that the stunt people would trick him into doing his own. <laughs> but someone who wasn't afraid was Rosemary Harris. She performed all of her own stunts, and we got the receipts to prove it. That's my aunt, mate. I believe there's a hero in all of us. The hospital scene was originally supposed to be a lot shorter, but they just said, Sam Raimi, cook. And they delivered us one of the best horror scenes in a non horror movie of all time with a bunch of references to Sam Raimi's previous work mainly the chainsaw which is a reference to Ash from Evil Dead's weapon of choice and a uh, right arm <laughs> the fingernails in the ground scene was achieved using wax I know a lot of people get Ugh, from watching this Willem Dafoe wasn't supposed to be in this movie but he was around the set one day and just decided to show up so not only did they write his cameo in son I'm here but he also pranked Alfred Molina by playing Doc Ock and he honestly didn't do that bad Mr. Ditkovich give me rent was named after Spider-Man co-creator Steve Ditko fun fact but the New Yorker on the bridge from the first movie Michael Edward Thomas shows up again in this movie as the guy who tells Peter Parker about the burning fire. We got some secret future Spider-Man villains that show up in this movie. John Jameson would go on in the comics to turn into a couple of different villains. Captain Jupiter, my favorite version being the spectacular Spider-Man version. And then the Man Wolf. They should make that a Spider-Man spinoff movie. <laughs> and most of you know this, but Dr. Kurt Connors would go on to turn into the lizard. Incredible and iconic comic book artist Alex Ross did the entire artwork in the opening credits. The scene in the beginning of the movie when Donnell Rawlings says, whoa, he stole that guy's pizza, was originally supposed to be Stan Lee, who later cameos a guy who just saves a woman from falling bricks. And the guy who steals a slice of pizza but gets the slice stolen back is played by Evil Dead Cole writer Scott Spiegel. Sam Raimi's brother, Ted Raimi, plays Hoffman. Yeah, what are we gonna call this guy? Uh, uh, Dr. Octopus. Nah, it's crap. Science squid? Crap. Dr. Strange. That's pretty good. But it's taken. Wait, wait, I got it. Dr. Octopus. New villain in town. Doc Ock. Genius. What are you looking for a raise? Get out. Precious tritium, which powers the power of the sun in the palm of my hand, is actually a real compound and highly radioactive. In a scene where Peter drops his books and gets hit in the head by a backpack, it's actually director Sam Raimi who hits him. You're struggling, but are you Peter Parker taping his backpack together because he can't afford a new one struggling? The iconic train fight scene was actually storyboarded all the way back in the first movie with even some previs done. This was the first scene they worked on when they started production on the movie. They even created a new camera called the Spider Cam to track Spider Man when he swings, which was extremely helpful during this fight scene, an action scene that in my humble opinion is still the best ever put in a comic book movie. Oh yeah, and those two kids who give Spider-Man his mask back are actually Tobey Maguire's real half-brothers. Spider-Man 2 would go on to be nominated for three Oscars, finally winning one for visual effects. So yeah, I'm gonna need everyone to start addressing it as Oscar-winning Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 2 would go on to grow $789.7 million worldwide on a $200 million budget, and I just love this movie, man.